20 years of hands-on experience in entrepreneurship, innovation and success psychology. He's established boards that include former heads of state, Nobel Peace Prize winners, Fortune 500 CEOs, and has a track record of starting businesses from scratch and selling them for tens of millions of dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matthew Michaelowitz. I grew up in academia. My father was the professor of artificial intelligence at a university. And when I graduated from the university myself, I became an entrepreneur to build an artificial intelligence company. And when I started doing that, I got interested in the subject of success, success psychology, behavioral sciences, so I could succeed in my business. So what makes me different as a speaker is I bring those three elements together, advanced technologies, innovation, AI, what's going to happen tomorrow and how it's going to change the world. I can put it into the context of business and entrepreneurship and wrap it with success psychology and principles that people can use in their work or life to give them a better chance of success and edge. I'm not just reading online blogs about artificial intelligence, I'm practicing AI. I'm running my third company that's developing artificial intelligence technology and I've been in the field for more than 20 years developing these kind of technologies for large companies. I'm living it, I'm breathing it and applying it every day in the real world. Most people don't realize that artificial intelligence is already here, but most businesses aren't aware of what it's doing today, what it is capable of doing, and most importantly, how they can apply the technology in their company to increase their competitiveness and their profitability. A quote that I really believe in and that's close to my heart is, if you do the things that are hard, your life will be easy. If you do the things that are easy, your life will be hard. What that means is it's easy to stay in the status quo. It's easy to continue with bad habits. It's easy to stay in a job we don't like. It's easy to continue as an executive, having things continue the way we've always done them. That's easy, but then we pay for it down the track. What's hard is changing the status quo, disrupting your business, quitting a job and starting a company, getting in shape, quitting bad habits. That's hard, but then life becomes easier and we reap the rewards of that. When I engage with audiences, I wanna make sure that I give them practical, action-oriented advice, but that I leave them with some of my values and principles. So the things that I've learned and adopted myself throughout my entire life, I can leave the audience members with that. Things like, for example, the power of knowledge. People believe typically that knowledge is expensive, that I have to go and uh, leave work, I have to pay for courses, travel someplace. They don't realize that the most expensive thing in their life is ignorance. It is the thing that prevents them from achieving what they want, versus where they are today. It's the difference between where you could have been and where you are. The thing that stops most people in getting what they want in life and succeeding is a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of how to. People that don't believe they can do something in business, nine out of 10 times just don't know how to do it. And because they don't know how to do it, it looks like magic. I, in fact, I believe success is just like magic in that there's a process being followed that you're not aware of. Executives, business owners would come to me and ask for advice around innovation and disruption. They're afraid of being disrupted and they ask for advice. And I tell them that the best advice I can give you is you should be the first to disrupt yourself. You do it. Disruption is inevitable. It's gonna happen whether you like it or not. So do you wanna disrupt yourself and reinvent your business and business model? Or do you wanna start up to do it for you. It's something I live by, I believe in, and I try to convey to audiences through practical lessons. I'm focused on customers, and what I do will change over time. It has to, because my customers are gonna change, the world's gonna change. But if I just stay focused on the customer, I've got the best chance of succeeding, I've got the best chance of delivering real value and having real engagements. Have a good look at yourself and your company from the eyes of the customers you wanna have, and see how they perceive you. It doesn't matter what you think of you, irrelevant. What matters is what your customers think of you. The first reason why goals get abandoned is lack of desire, which might sound very airy-fairy. And coming from a scientific family, two PhDs, I had a very strict upbringing in terms of evidence-based type of thinking, scientific thinking. So I wasn't allowed to succumb to airy-fairy concepts. So about a year and a half ago, my oldest son was finishing dinner and he finished everything on his plate except the broccoli. And I said, Adam, are you gonna finish the broccoli? And I said, no, I can't. And I said, oh, you can't, Adam. What if, what if 
I gave you $5. Could you do it then? And I could see in his little brain kind of the wheels beginning to turn. And he's my son, so I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, hmm, $5, I don't know. $5 doesn't buy what it used to buy. And, you know, money's being printed all around the world. I'm sure inflation's going to kick in. It's going to reduce my buying power and the parity of the U.S. dollar and Australia. So I had to short circuit that thought process immediately. So what I did is I raised my offer. I said, Adam, look, before you answer, would you do it? Could you do it? for $20. And before I could even finish the sentence, his little hand grabbed the broccoli on the plate, squeezed it, put it into his mouth. You could see on his face anguish, hatred of parents, mankind. And he puts out his hand, he says $20. And I said, Adam, there's a misunderstanding. I was just asking a question. If you, you know, if you could, could you? That's why my kids now say pay first, Dad. Money on the table, pay first. When our engagement with a goal or our incentive to achieve a goal isn't high enough, we don't put in the effort. And when our effort's really, really low, we just say, we can't. You might have a goal. You might own a team, a business unit, or an entire company in terms of P&L and so forth. And you might be very clear where you want to head, and you might have enormous desire to achieve it. But if you're dependent on other people to help you achieve those goals, you need to engage those people with your goals as well. You need to make them care. You need to incentivize them in proper ways, which doesn't always have to be financial methods. It can be others. So desire is the backbone. It's the engine room. It's the workhorse of actually moving us towards what we're trying to achieve absolutely critical. As a speaker, what I believe in when I go on stage is that not only I have to be relevant to the audience and I've got to entertain them and I've got to make sure that I keep their attention, but I want to be extremely practical and action oriented. I want to be the kind of speaker that people leave uh, the auditorium, the event, and they think not only was that great, relevant, it educated me, but the things Matt said, I can apply right now. As an entrepreneur myself, what I believe in is that the customer is the center of the universe. Your reason for existing is to serve your customer, to add value, solve problems, make their life better. So when I go to an event, I view an audience member as my customer. And I bring that same philosophy. How can I add value, solve problems, better their life? How can I make them feel at the end where they walk out and feel that was fantastic? That is exactly relevant to my situation and it's gonna help me do this, 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 that. And at every event that I speak at, that's my goal as a speaker.